Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya Colored Portal to Phyrexia reanimator deck that's trying to cheat all these expensive artifacts and enchantments into play as early as turn 4 thanks to both the repair and recharge as well as the new campus renovation. A 5 mana sorcery can return up to one target artifact or enchantment card from our graveyard to the battlefield and we also get to exile the top two cards of our library and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards so it can provide a bit of extra value whereas the repair and recharge can and bring back artifact enchantment or planeswalker and then also create a tapped power stone token which we can maybe use to cast some of our expensive artifacts so what spells are we trying to cheat into play we've got four copies of one with the multiverse an eight mana enchantment letting us take a look at the top card of our library at any time and we may play lands and cast spells from the top of our library and once during each of our turns we may cast a spell from our hand or the top of our library without paying its mana cost so that can also be a gateway to casting a cityscape leveler for free and we which case we can immediately destroy a non-land permanent and replace it with a tapped power stone token whenever we cast it but also whenever the leveler attacks and as an 8-8 trampler it can close out the game pretty quickly can also unearth it from the graveyard for eight mana but we're often going to be bringing it back with our own portal to phyrexia and that's the big stabilizing play because by the time we can bring back one of these expensive cards we're going to be pretty far behind on board so we need something to catch us back up and portal is perfect for it as the opponent will now have to sacrifice three of their creatures when portal enters a battlefield and at the beginning of our upkeep we can return a creature from any graveyard to the battlefield under our control so we can start reanimating the creatures that we made the opponent sacrifice as well as maybe bring back our own creatures so that's our game plan and how are we gonna achieve that well we need a bit of a ramp to make sure we can cast these on turn four since turn five is often too slow and we also need some discard outlets to make sure we can put these expensive cards in the graveyard in the first place so that's where scrapwork mud comes in handy a two mana two one creature when it enters we get to discard a card if we do draw a card and we can also unearth it for one and a red so we can do it a second time and then invasion of ergamon is the main reason to play a bit of green in this deck as we get to not only discard and draw but also make a treasure token so that can set up a turn four repair or a renovation and then once we transform invasion we also get a cliff charge or a three four trampler that can maybe discard a card when it enters and then a search up or library for any land or potentially another battle to put in hand instead and then I'm also trying two copies of Reckless Handling, another Aftermath card. This one does have quite a bit of inherent risk attached to it, as we get to search our library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it into our hand, and then we have to discard a card at a random. So the idea is we can search up our leveler or most likely portal, Put it in hand if we get lucky we can discard them to our handling and then we don't need to find another discard outlet but every now and then there's also the risk of a discarding or only copy of repair and recharge or campus renovation and that can lead to some awkward situations but every now and then we can also search up scrap work mutt if we just need a discard outlet if we already have portal in hand and then even if we discard mutt we can still unearth it to bring back portal and every now and then we can also get the celestus which can help us ramp and fix our colors and as it switches between day and night we can gain a bit of life back and also potentially discard some of those expensive cards to later bring back and then Jewel Thief gives us another creature that can get in the way, can help us protect our life total and make an extra treasure when it enters for ramp. And then later we can bring it back with Portal. And those treasure tokens can also come in handy when it comes to hard casting one with a multiverse once we're in the late game. And then a three copies of Brotherhood's End as our main interaction to help us reset the board if we're up against the aggressive creature decks can also potentially destroy cheaper artifacts. And this can also be important when facing creatures like Thalia, making all our non-creature spells more expensive, which can be pretty hard to beat. And then also graveyard hate cards, such as Graveyard Trespasser, which can exile our key cards in the graveyard. And then there's also Denik out of the Asper Legends deck, which prevents us from targeting stuff in our graveyard, which is also incidental graveyard hate that happens to be very effective against us. And in the green ramp decks you can also run into a scrap gorger every now and then which is another must answer card and then our mana base has a lot of mana fixing of course starting with the jetmere's garden also have the one courtyard to go with a few basics that we can search up and then the channel lands offer additional interaction i Gansho to deal for damage crucible to make one once and busaju can blow up artifacts or enchantments and we can also search up these channel lands if we manage to transform our invasion of ergamon so that can also come up and then a sundown pass as another untapped red white duel starting from turn three important for double red for brotherhood's end and double white for repair and recharge 
And then I'm rounding out the mana base with a few pain lands, since we need to have those red and green mana symbols early for Invasion of Ergamon, but at the same time we don't want our lands to come into play tapped on a critical turn 4 or turn 5, so that's why I'm avoiding the fast lands and going for the more painful Corpluzen Forest and Brush land instead. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has all the tools it needs, except for maybe a couple extra lands, but can hope to draw into them with Invasion. And then Jewel Thief gives us an extra treasure. So ideally we can set up a turn 4 renovation. Although for points on the Mono Blue Hottie Jin deck, they could have some counter spells lined up. Start with Invasion. That resolves. Can discard one with a multiverse as well. So yeah, we've got a couple options. Might just want to play a mutt, discarding one with a multiverse, and then playing a tapped land to then set up our renovation next turn. Although we may want to build up our mana to play around a conditional counter spell. But I'm going for a thirst here. Opponent goes for Hodigen, so they still have potentially two mana left for a counter spell. But we picked up another repair and recharge. So if this reanimation effect resolves, we're in great shape. If it doesn't, I guess we would rather have repair and recharge countered. And go for one with the multiverse, because then we can cast renovation for free, get back portal. They might have a protection spell for Hodigen, like a slip out the back. But that's fine. Okay, that resolved. Cast our free campus renovation. And now they counter with Artai Scorn, which they couldn't use before. Makes sense. Okay, at least we have our enchantment on the battlefield, which will hopefully pull us ahead. Fading Hope, the Mutt. Okay, on top of our deck, a Reckless Handling. Don't mind if I do. So we'll pay two mana for this, so we can cast whatever we search up for free. Another one with a multiverse would have been fun. And then I'm thinking Cityscape Leveler, since it's a cast trigger. That way we can destroy Hotigen, even if they have another counter spell. Although free portal seems better value. Can go for Leveler next turn. I imagine they'll have another counter spell here. Or a slip out the back. Okay, and then I can play Jewel Thief perhaps. And then next turn we can try free leveler, and then if they counter it, we can still repair and recharge it back. Fading Hope Jewel Thief. Don't think we're playing a scrap work mod here. So yeah, if they have a couple more counter spells and slip out the back, we could die to this Hadi Jin. Tolarian Terror, not as much of a concern since we can chump it on the ground. Okay, player free land. Leveler. And hope this works. As the scatter, that's fine. Still destroy Hadi Jin, which is what matters. Unless. Their last card is another slip out to back. Okay, at least our opponent's empty handed. We can repair and recharge, bring back leveler, and then still play a cheaper creature. That way, next turn, leveler gets to attack. Or we can go for portal next turn, which may be better, although there's a chance they draw a counter spell in the meantime. So maybe this is slightly safer. Bring back leveler now, and then play a scrap work mutt. Discarding Invasion. So now they would need another Bound spell, which they've already played two copies of. Fall to two. Okay, 
Another free one with a multiverse. Get spell pierced, I'll pay. Can use our power stones for it, and then campus renovation for free. Bring back portal. Find another leveler. This should seal the deal. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing a discard outlet. Without it, our hand is not really gonna function. So, might be worth a mulligan despite having the reanimation targets and reanimation effects. Okay, this seems better. Now we have to get rid of a card, and it's a tough choice. Could get rid of maybe a Celestus, that way we have Handling to fetch up our portal, and then Mutt to discard it, Renovation to bring it back. We're just going to miss the Acceleration, but uh, yeah, even if we get it on turn 5, it might be good enough. And we'll get a Mountain. And then if we draw a finisher, we can use Handling to maybe get a Celestus. Okay, there's Celestus. So, I need to Handling before we play Scrapwork Mutt, even though I would like a blocker for the Toxic creature. And then hope not to discard Renovation. Okay, discarded Portal, so that's convenient. Opponent clearly a Toxic deck here, could be Abzan colors, black, white and green. Another Skull Dweller, and an Injector. Okay, so yeah, could play Celestus and next turn Renovation already, that's probably the plan. Hope they can't play more than three creatures so we can clean up the board nicely with Portal. Opponent equips, that's fine. So now it stacks Toxic to Toxic 2 basically. And another one. Okay, that's fine. So we'll take four more poison up to five. But then we should be able to stabilize nicely. And a brother at its end gives us more interaction. Now, of course, the injectors will still play an important role this game. But we can keep getting back the opponent's cold dwellers with death touch. So those should help. Sentries next. Can uh, exile our Celestus. Although now Brotherhood's End can just destroy all artifacts with mana value 3 or less and clean up everything. So that seems convenient. Equipment are gone. Get back our Celestus. Play a Mutt. Maybe discard Brushland so we can cycle Garden. We're not going to be killing the opponent very quickly, but they shouldn't be able to pressure us all that easily. Opponent maybe activating Mirax here to make a 1-1. One -one. Jewel Thief will help. Don't think we need Invasion anymore. Found another one. So maybe just cycle Jetmir's Garden, or we can play Invasion of Ergamon and discard it. And play Jewel Thief, switch it back to daytime, loot again with the Celestus. Okay, let so see if we find another finisher here. We may be able to hard cast it thanks to all these treasures. Otherwise, there's repair and recharge if the Mutt ends up in the graveyard to discard. And we'll try and transform our invasion here. Give us an extra creature to apply pressure with. Next turn we can get back Sentry, Exile the token. And sure, we'll hang on to Repair and Recharge, I guess. And we'll block. Opponent can activate Seed Core. But then uh, we just get back our Jewel Thief next turn, so that's fine. Our opponent needs an answer to portal to Phyrexia, and if they do, we still have a repair and charge. So, go for Jewel Thief. 
and another campus renovation. So if scrapwork mud trades, that would be nice. Get to transform our invasion. Nothing too exciting to search up with it, but let's see here. Can just get another invasion of Ergamon. Could get a Buseju to blow up one of their lands. Or we can get like a Crucible of Defiance to make some extra 1-1s. One sure. Can maybe activate Celestus. And a leveler we can bring back, or hardcast next turn, maybe. So we'll just discard Crucible then. Okay. By hardcasting it, we get a trigger the turn we play it. And then we keep renovation as something to maybe bring back Portal if something goes wrong. Can exile their Flyer, or maybe their Death Toucher. And then destroy the Flyer with leveler. Our opponent's hanging in there, but the game was kind of decided with a turn 4 portal to Phyrexia. They can still activate Seed Core to pump Crawling Chorus. Okay. And our opponent finally throws in the towel onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands got two nice reanimation targets, missing our reanimation effect, and also double rent for Brotherhood's End is not there yet. But I think this has enough potential. Another portal's not what we needed. Probably start by discarding one with a multiverse so we can cast portal. Okay, now with the reckless handling, what do we get? Could go for a Celestus, which can fix her mana. And discarded Celestus, alright. So that didn't accomplish much. Trespasser is kind of the worst case scenario, but luckily have a Brotherhood's End to answer it. So that's convenient, since we did not discard any of our valuable cards in the process. Can't really beat the second one. Obliterator's next, so opponent's ready to fight. And found an invasion, so maybe start there. Discard one with the multiverse. And could play Mutt, since we still need a reanimation effect. Although if they fight Scrapwork Mutt, that's not ideal. So maybe I should just keep it in hand for now. Take 5 down to 11. It's going to be a pretty fast clock. There's eight powerful top decks to set up this one with the multiverse. Okay, I think we're forced to play a mutt here. Can discard another one and unearth it. Alright, there's our renovation. So, one portal can be discarded. Because I might need to hit a few extra land drops if her opponent fights Mutt and makes a sacrifice to permanence. So yeah, we'll still need an extra land to cast Renovation if a fight happens. And that is assuming no Graveyard Trespasser. Another Arena is fine. And we get to untap, perfect. So let's renovate one with a multiverse. And cast a free portal to Phyrexia from hand, most likely. 
could uh, play another renovation for another portal instead. Sure, I guess it works too. Opponent might have a Boseju for one with the multiverse. And Terra Sunder instead. Okay, at least we got our value. And then I could just play Timed Garden now since we can't play Sundown Pass off the top. And try and transform the invasion, I guess. So next turn we can get back Fraction Obliterator or Trespasser to gain us some life back. Double Arena is also adding up. Both in terms of card advantage but also damage. So we want to try and turn the corner as quickly as possible. So their opponent exiled their own creature to deny getting back Obliterator. Still get a Trespasser. And then now can't quite play this portal to Phyrexia, but we can Campus Renovation after discarding it. And then one with a multiverse we can cast next turn with our treasures. And we'll discard a land. What do we want to get? Poseju could blow up a Phyrexian Arena. Could go for Crucible to make some 1-1s. One Let's grab a Poseju. And pass. For now, I'm okay with the opponent's drawing. Another obliterator, so if a fight happens, that could still hurt. But earlier, they didn't have any fight spells yet. Of course, they drew a few cards in the meantime. Portal triggers, get back Trespasser, get back Glissa. And then no creatures to exile. So cast one with the multiverse. And how about a leveler? Destroy obliterator. And now we feel a lot more comfortable. So can attack all out. And then do we want to exile obliterator for the one extra damage? Um, I think we would rather keep it in the graveyard for portal. So submit zero. Cut down on mutts. That happens. And then now we could maybe Boseju for just one mana since we control a legendary to destroy Phyrexian Arena. Because if our opponent goes Obliterator into a fight effect, that could be bad. If they fight our leveler. It's going to be a Shieldritz. That's still fine. And a Bushwhack. Okay. So they still seem dead on board. Get back Obliterator. And a Scrapwork Mutt. And our opponent explodes. Can attack all out. Leveler destroys Shieldred. And that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand looks good. We've got all the tools we need to reanimate Portal on turn 4, assuming we can find one more land. So hopefully our opponent's on a creature deck where Portal lines up. Turn 2 Invasion. So now the main concern would be a Graveyard Trespasser. Could wait a turn on discarding Portal, maybe start with Invasion discarding a scrapwork mutt and then next turn we can unearth it although then if the exile mutts we're still stuck with the portal in hand but that's not as much of a disaster i guess and then i'll hang on to buseju for now okay because if they do have graveyard hate we'll have to wait until we can discard portal and reanimate it in the same turn which is going to be a little tricky to set up. 
opponent on taps. And a harvester is next. Okay. No trespassers, good news. Discard portal now. Opponent might have a cut down. And a backup repair and recharge. Okay, so let's attack our invasion for two. And then ideally our opponent taps out for a shield root. And we can take it out with portal next turn. Take three. Get to untap. Okay, I think I'm still down to repair and recharge here. Opponent might be setting up a big score into a planeswalker, so waiting on portals not really gonna do us any favors. Next turn we can uh, cycle garden, maybe using the power stone as well. And then the blood token from Harvester gives us more card selection. Potem might have an abrade here, yep. So glad we have another repair and recharge in hand. So now they might commit something like a shield root. There we go. All according to plan. Yeah, let's renovate instead of repair. And then next turn we can play Invasion and a Courtyard. Bring back the opponent's shield root, probably. Over Harvester. And not our Harvester is fine. Yeah, it's pretty hard for these mid-range decks to beat Portal in a long game. So let's Invasion, discarding maybe a Carpluzen Forests. Then I can still cycle Garden. Opponent might take out Shieldred before we gain any life. So let's cycle in response. And at least gain two. And then still discard a Pain Land here. Okay. Use our Courtyard before it goes away. One basic left. And then could play another Invasion, but I might want to just cast it next turn. Could also discard Portal, bring it back with the Repair and Recharge in one turn. If our opponent presents a couple more creatures, but yeah, opponent sees a riding on the wall and concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's not perfect since we're missing a 5 mana reanimation effect. But we do have a Scrapwork mod to discard Leveler and maybe draw into one of those effects. Our opponent, in the meantime, looks to be on green-white enchantments. Double Visitor. And maybe an Audacity as well. Yep, so that's gonna hit us pretty hard here. Still happy to cast a Brotherhood's Ends before we fall too far behind. And then next turn we can hopefully go Celestis into a scrap work mod if we draw an untapped land. Invasion can uh, now exile our leveler, so we can't necessarily discard it anymore. So that's a setback. Goes for Celestis instead. That's fine. And a visitor. So we can go Jewel Thief into Mutt, or we can just double Mutt. Get this leveler in the graveyard while we can. And then I don't feel too inclined to play another Scrapwork Mutt at the moment, since I'm happy with my hand. Could maybe discard a Jewel Thief, but it's still an extra blocker to buy time. Naturalist pumps Visitor. And Companion gives another counter. So Leveler's not going to be as amazing as, let's say, a Portal to Phyrexia could be here. Especially if our opponent can just uh, exile Leveler before we can attack with it. 
Okay, can play five mana Celestus, or we can play a three mana one followed by Jewel Thief. Could also Jewel Thief and play Mutt, discarding Celestus, since I don't think we're hard casting or eight and nine drops. So might as well uh, give ourselves the best board presence. And then we can always cast five mana Celestus later. Okay, Brother it ends. I'll take. Wipe the opponent's board. And then next turn maybe deploy Celestus. Another invasion grabs Jewel Thief. And a wedding announcement's a good one. Ooh, nice. There's our campus renovation. Bring back Cityscape Leveler. And can even play a land here. And another one next turn. So one turn to top deck nullification, pretty much. Audacity's fine. So we can start attacking. Play a land from exile. But yeah, opponent has seen enough. An unchecked leveler can destroy wedding announcement. And then we've got some more creatures to play defense. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And our hand is missing a second land. So I don't think we can keep. This is missing a reanimation effect. But we have a lot of draw and discard. So I'll try it. And then one leveler can probably go. Turn two. Could go for a scrap work mutt. Especially against Monorant, we want a board presence. Next turn, maybe Celestus first. And we'll trade here. Opponent found a backup Felden. Can play another Mutt. And then discard Invasion of Ergamon since it doesn't look like we're gonna reanimate on turn 4. So may as well plan for a turn 5. And at least Celestus can maybe gain some life back. Actually found the campus renovation, so going for a different line could have set it up on turn 4 already. But it's okay. Just gotta keep our life total high. Bones got to play with fire, so we take three. Can bring back Mutt after playing Celestus. Just to dig a little bit deeper. Don't need land anymore. Okay, Brother it's end could also come in handy. May line up better than Leveler, or we could play it afterwards. Squee? Yeah, that's going wide. So I may need to Brother its end now instead of Leveler. Felden gets to dig. And we'll bring back Mutt once again. Only need one of these effects. Okay. So we're not in a great spot, but next turn we're looking at a cityscape leveler at least. Raiju is not what we wanted to see either. So down to five we go. Bit of life gain there. And we could still cast Reckless Handling if we'd like. We can still cast it next turn as well. If I go for it now, then I could get maybe, let's see, we would have six, seven mana. Probably get another Cityscape leveler at that point. As opposed to gaining one with Courtyard, which could also make a difference if our opponent, let's say, animates Foundry or brings back Squee. Could see the one life mattering. So yeah, let's uh, set up the handling next turn then. Kumano puts us to five. And 
the second Raiju. Yeah, that's gonna seal the deal here, I'm afraid. Down to three we go, and still take four. Alright, GG's. Monorad's always gonna be a tough matchup, since even if we bring back a leveler, we can't really afford to attack with it unless we've got multiple blockers back. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's missing an expensive reanimation target. Also missing red mana for Invasion of Ergamon. So I don't think we can keep. This one's also missing a reanimation target. Our mana's better. So close call. Maybe this one's worth a shot. And between a renovation and a land, it's also close. Let's get rid of a renovation and hopefully one's enough. Okay, perfect. Can discard one with a multiverse. And then ideally find something to ramp into it on turn four. Other opponent may be packing counter spells. Indulgence, so they might also be on a reanimation deck. This card's cut down for now. And Invasion of Amonkhet makes his discard. Well, that also could have been a useful discard outlet. Mills a few cards. So I can play another Mutt, although I don't really want to discard more stuff. Since we need land 5. And another renovation could be useful if they counter the first one. So let's go for it. And that resolved, awesome. And how about a free cityscape leveler? Can destroy the opponent's invasion, does not transform it luckily. And our opponent has seen enough, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing something expensive to put in the graveyard. But I think I'm still keeping. Got a couple discard outlets, ways to make extra mana, and then can always cast a brother at its end, even if we need to use our treasure to not fall too far behind. Okay, there's our leveler, perfect. So invasion, discard leveler. And then we're on track to bring it back on turn four. Opponents on an Esper deck. Do we want a Reckless Handling? Could go for Portal to Phyrexia. Although there's a chance that we discard our Renovation, which would be a disaster. So it's not without risk. Also don't really want to discard land, because we need it for Renovation, so... Yeah, let's just go for Scrapwork Mud, discard Handling. And could cast Invasion. There's a chance I want to cast a Brotherhood's End, but missing the second red makes it a bit more difficult, I suppose. Sure, we'll uh, Invasion discard Brotherhood's End. And found a portal anyways. Let's see what's next. If our opponent's on Esper Legends, there's a few cards that could mess things up. Thalia making everything more expensive, but then there's also Denik, which prevents us from targeting anything in Graveyard. So then we can't even cast our Renovation or our Repair and Recharge. Just a Farmhand, so the coast is clear to bring back a Leveler, although Leveler may not be good enough in this matchup, as our opponent can easily exile it before it gets a chance to attack. We would still get a bit of value from our renovation, which could help. Could also handling, and then take it from there. Maybe we'll attack with a mud first, and our opponent will trade, making things easier, because then we can just unearth discard portal. All right. Okay, we'll just pass it back. And then next turn, renovation for Portal. Might be a better investment than bringing back Leveler. Yep. 
opponent passes. And may not have to use a treasure here. Portal resolves, finding one with a multiverse, which we're not going to be able to cast. And for parenter charge can bring back a leveler. Deluge goes digging, so opponent's more of a control deck, I guess. Portal can also bring back a leveler, of course. And if they have removal for portal, let's say a void rent, then we can just repair and recharge it back. Opponent gets rid of a march, we'll bring back probably leveler, although farmhand's actually interesting too, because then we get a plains, should have one left. And then I can repair and recharge, bring back a leveler. And the power stone will come in handy when it comes to hard casting some of our artifacts. Okay, so let's repair. And at this bait we'll exile or counter spell here. Okay, can try again next turn with renovation, but of course Portal can also just go for it. So bring back a leveler. Handling could be worth casting. Handling for another leveler. Hope not to discard renovation, which is why I didn't play my land first. So we've got a higher likelihood of uh, discarding a non-renovation card. And then now we could cast renovation. And then even if there's a board wipe, there's still portal to bring everything back. Although I guess sunfall would hurt since it exiles our creatures. So maybe going for renovation is a bit too greedy. Okay, dissipate. Of course, if our opponent has farewell, they can exile everything regardless, so might as well get value from our renovation then. Opponent passes, bring back leveler. Now Wandering Emperor is a concern, since that could uh, exile leveler, but now with another one that may be okay. So we can attack. And then we could destroy our own invasion just to get an extra power stone. There's Wandering Emperor. Exiles Leveler. And we'll keep up the pressure here. Cast Leveler. Destroy Emperor. And hope to dodge Farewell or Sunfall. Putin passes, so another Wandering Emperor seems likely. Could now Reckless Handling and try and get some more artifacts going. And if we discard Mutt, we can unearth it too. So we're out of Levelers, so another Portal is an option, or we can just get another Mutt. And then we can unearth, discard another Mutt, so they can all attack. Only downside is we're exiling the mutt in the process, so we can't portal it back. Okay, one with a multiverse. We can't quite hard cast now. Destroyer invasion once again. And that's probably it. There's another Wandering Emperor, as we suspected. So we can exile the leveler. And then still take a decent chunk of damage. You're done. Okay. Finally find our one with a multiverse, but uh, we're running out of threats in our library. So that's the main concern if our opponent can keep exiling stuff. Okay, so not much going on here besides an attack step. Opponent has Deluge. 
Can they find an answer to the leveler? Go for the throw, it doesn't work. Which is maybe a card they're holding. Alright, we got there. So close game here against Asper Control. Needed every single leveler to cross the finish line. Got to see our Naya portal deck in action. And while the deck is capable of reanimating a portal or one with a multiverse as early as turn 4 with a decent amount of consistency, it also suffers from draws where it doesn't find the combo pieces and then it doesn't accomplish anything. There's also incidental graveyard hate that shows up a frequent amount in standard. So overall you're definitely facing an uphill battle if you're taking this to the ranked queue, but as far as a casual deck is concerned this can be a ton of fun. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always... Have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.